All right, everyone, thanks so much for joining today. This is TAM Lab 113, uh, enabling MFA in vSphere 7. And so my name is Bill. Uh, I'm a staff TAM here at VMware, and uh, I'm going to be leading you through the session today. So big disclaimer here. Uh, the solutions that we're addressing during the session, um, they're seen across a number of our customers, and they're easily accessible for these kinds of purposes. This is not an endorsement by VMware for any particular brand or product in the marketplace. Um, you can do other, use other solutions out there to do the same kind of things. So I just wanna be very clear, we're not saying that any solution in here is the go-to, okay? So what are we gonna do in this session today? We're gonna do about five things here. Um, talk about authentication, kind of level set on, on how this is gonna work for us. Uh, we'll do a quick review of setting up ADFS. Um, and if you want more in depth, you can check out TAM Lab number 66 that we ran, I don't know, 18 months ago. Um, it goes a little more in detail uh, into getting it fully set up. Uh, we're gonna do an integration with Duo, Ping One, and then we're gonna uh, do a configuration that allows power CLI authentication. Okay, so from an authentication flow perspective, focusing on what we're used to, right? With our SSO domain. So we see that as vSphere.local uh, as the default. Um, you have a vCenter and it collects credentials. So username and password, and it does the validation of those credentials to say whether or not they are valid or invalid. None of this is a surprise. Um, and if they're valid, they create a token. Right, And then if it's invalid, it's rejected and you have to try again. And this is all done within the scope of a vCenter. So vCenter handles all of this inside itself. When we look to LDAP, so that's the next extension that we typically see, um, we have our vCenter and it collects credentials. So again, think of our, um, our login screen. We're asking for username and password, right? That's done within the vCenter, and then it passes it to LDAP, right? So it takes those credentials, sends it over to the LDAP server where it validates. And then it says, yes, these are valid or no, it's not valid. And then it creates a token and then, or rejects the login, right? So you can see here where vCenter is kind of handing off some of the things to another system. With ADFS, it's slightly different, but it's different in, in very meaningful ways here. So again, a vCenter. Now you'll see it makes a determination um, through the login process. We'll see this here in the lab, um, whether or not to log in via ADFS. And so this instance is going to log in via ADFS within that vCenter scope there, but then it hands it off to ADFS. So Active Directory Federation Services from Microsoft. ADFS actually collects the credentials itself. vCenter doesn't know anything about your password. Then ADFS is going to validate the credentials itself, tell you whether or not it's valid or invalid, and generate, you know, you can generate a token or log in again. But what's important here is what ADFS is doing for the login process, where it's it's actually collecting the credentials and it's actually doing the validation. Right, so that whole authentication component is really being done entirely by another system. And so what's happening inside of ADFS from, at least from vSphere, right? So it's collecting the credentials. Um, vCenter just filters on the username. And again, we'll see that here in the UI. Um, the username and password is not handled by vCenter. Then it validates credentials using whatever policies are configured. It's usually dependent on the business, right? And what their security rules are and requirements. Um, often it's, you know, username and password. It could be a certificate or a device or MFA or, or other things. Um, there's a lot of integrations with ADFS. So, you know, it's, it's all up to what ADFS can really, you know, extend to. Um, and then vSphere is looking for confirm credentials. And if they're confirmed, you get a session, right? So it's pretty simple from the vSphere perspective. 
So what does vCenter care about with ADFS integration? The evaluated credentials. It does not care about what's going on inside of that black box. It cares that that black box has generated valid credentials or invalid credentials. Okay, so welcome to the lab. Um, in the lab, we have a vCenter deployed. We call it ADFS vCenter. Uh, it's 7.0 update three. Uh, we also have um, ADFS deployed on a Windows Server 2019. That's meaningful because Microsoft has made some changes from 2012 and 2016 and ADFS living on top of those to 2019. So if your customer or you are um, considering this, just know based on your version of ADFS, instructions for the integrations might look a little different. Um, but that's what we're working with here um, as we get going. So let's take a quick, uh, quick tour. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and log in to this vCenter. And you can see here, there's nothing set up. It's just the local SSO domain, vSphere.local. Um, and that's about it. If we go look at the inventory, it's pretty boring. We just have a data center and a cluster with nothing inside. This is very lightweight. Okay, so let's go to configuration here, back to here. Um, when you're working with uh, your team, whoever's managing ADFS for something like this, they're gonna wanna know a couple things to get this started. And uh, there's this little I up here next to change identity provider. This is where we actually start the process of going to ADFS. So if you hit the little I, it's gonna give some things called redirect URIs. And these are components that the ADFS team are gonna to need to know in order to set this thing up. Um, from a flow perspective, you wanna set up the ADFS side before you do vSphere. Otherwise you could interrupt people's authentication and whatever else. So we're gonna leave these here on screen and we're gonna start setting up ADFS. Um, so over here on the right, you can see my ADFS environment and we're gonna get rolling here. Um, so let's go ahead real quick and set up an application group. We'll call this uh, TAM Lab uh, Sphere MFA. Okay, so next uh, it's gonna be a server application using a web API. Um, we have our client identifiers. Now this is where we take these redirect URIs. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that one, paste it straight into here, add that. We'll take the other one add that into here. Okay, next, we're gonna go ahead and create a shared secret. So this is something that we're gonna to give to vCenter. Okay. There we go. Um, per our documentation, um, we just created this client ID uh, just a screen ago. And this is something that vCenter is actually gonna report back. Um, and so we need to go ahead and use that as well. So we're recycling it right there. Now we're gonna create a default policy of permitting everyone, but you can see, and we'll see it later, there are different types of policies, uh, including one that says permit everyone and require MFA. So for the time being, we're gonna permit everyone through ADFS. And then once we get MFA going, we're gonna change this policy. Um, we have to adjust some uh, LDAP attributes into OAuth um, to create some claims. So we're making a couple adjustments here. Next and close. So now we have our application group created. We call it TamLab vSphere MFA. And inside are a couple of applications. So I'm gonna to go to this web API real quick. Um, and this is where we do some LDAP attribute mapping, right? So you can see here, we're gonna send LDAP attributes as claims. Uh, first one here is a group claim. We're gonna pick it from AD. And we're gonna find group qualified by long domain. Again, this is this is called out in our documentation. Um, so I'm not just making this stuff up as I go. Next one is gonna be a subject claim. We're gonna pull this from Active Directory. And this time we're gonna take the UPN and we're gonna map this to what's called the name ID. And then the last one here is gonna be the UPN claim and pulling it from Active Directory. We're gonna pick our UPN again. 
All right, and we're going to pick UPN. Okay. So again, I know I'm going quick. Uh, you know, TamLab 66 goes into a lot more detail. So the last thing I want to do is I'm going to use this just as a reference for us here. Um, I'm going to go to endpoints with an ADFS. And these are all different kinds of, um, you know, what we see as a URL or a URI that actually leads to different services in ADFS. The one I care about is at the bottom here, and it's called OpenID Connect. And this URL here, URI, actually gives vCenter a ton of information about how to contact ADFS. It's a very important URL. So I want to at least call out how you can find what that is um, if you don't already know. So at this point, we're set up on the ADFS side to get rolling. I'm going to go ahead over here to change identity provider. So this is a big change. Um, you know, normally we're used to, you know, integrated Windows authentication, AD over LDAP, open LDAP, whatever, right? This is a fundamental change, right? We are changing how vCenter can authenticate users. Um, so it's not like we can pick one or two of these like we have been able to do before. No, we're picking ADFS. Um, so I'm gonna go grab that client identifier that we created earlier. Actually, you know what, I can grab it here. I'll show you where it is. So under the, uh, the application itself, under server application, I'm grabbing that client ID. And then the shared secret, um, which you can only get that one time unless you regenerate it. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there. Um, and then again, the open ID address. So going back to my endpoints here, we can see it's the adfs.wellknown slash uh, open ID configuration. Now, what's important here is ADFS does a great job at authenticating users, but it doesn't actually allow you to search for users and groups. And that's, a, that's an important part of our security model, right? Being able to take, um, take users and groups from our enterprise um, security systems, right? And actually, you know, apply, apply group permissions to them. So we still create an LDAP or LDAP-esque connection to just search for users and groups. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use autocomplete here. Uh, make sure it's the right password and get going. Invalid, ah, back. Let's... Ah, doesn't like that. Oh, that's right, because I'm using the wrong account. See, going too fast. There we go. So we see this has changed dramatically from what we're used to seeing, right? Where it's usually a table with some different security options here, authentication options. Now we see it here where it's calling out, here's our um, ADFS server, here's our LDAP lookups and the redirect URIs. Um, so big change. Uh, the next thing we wanna do real quick is set up permissions. Otherwise I can't log in. So I'm gonna go to users and groups. See here, there's a bit of a UI bug here. So if I, I actually have to stretch this out just a little bit, there we go. So I'm gonna go into uh, administrators and I'm gonna add myself. So I'm gonna change this to my vb.info, uh, which is my domain, do a quick search. There we go. So we validated that my LDAP setup is working. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and do a logout. And we're gonna see the, the second piece of evidence that we've changed authentication. Okay. So now we have a, a change where we're not seeing username and password, but we're seeing, you know, sign in with your username. And this is where vSphere is gonna make the decision whether or not I'm gonna actually authenticate with like, you know, an internal vSphere.local account or go to ADFS, right? So we see a big change here. Let's go ahead and log in real quick. So I'm gonna log in with my domain account. And you can see it changed, right? So my URL at the top is now adfs.vb.info. It's not my vCenter. And 
I haven't provided any credentials to vCenter yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign in here. And there we go. Pretty cool. Let's go ahead and sign out. All right, so that's trying to go a million miles an hour to play catch up on the ADFS setup. So now we've got that all set up. So let's get into um, setting up an integration here.